What is up, everybody, and welcome back to the Serie A experience with IFTV. A great weekend for some, and not as great a weekend for others. My man, Peter Other. Curto, <laughs> on uh, on my right side. Not the greatest of weekends. Anto, for you, it, was, it always turns out well, though, because for some reason, no matter how many players get injured, no matter who goes down, how the game is going, Milan always find a way to win. We're just talking off camera that we thought for sure was going to end in a 1-1. But that Milan mentality that you have this year keeps pulling through. I like it. You know why? Because while we were watching the game, I had those two, <laughs> those two animals Supporting right next you? to me. That as soon as uh, <clears throat> uh, the game was tied on the overtime, they were doing yeah, all of that that, that nasty stuff. They just to wrap it in. In other words, yes, yeah, screw you. And <laughs> then two minutes later, Not even. their faces were dropped like. Boom! Because it was another one-two punch that I couldn't take it. We left them just uh, like a gasping a for fish air. out of water. Gasping for that's a that's the right way to say it. Gasping for air. <laughs> <laughs> no more air. They need an oxygen tank. Both of them. That's gonna be memed out. Including this, course. including the guy that the AC Milan fan over here. You know, I was lost fake, for air because I was so happy AC Milan, Milan scored. Fan. You were what? I, I was gasping for her because I was so excited that Milan scored. Yeah, okay. Next. Did you, did you, when it was 1 1, be honest with me, did you think that you were going to come back? Come uh, on. No. Okay. No. Thank you. I have, I, I'm honest. Hey, I'm not like you, but at least I'm honest. <laughs> How do you keep, like, when when I was, when we were watching the game and it went 1 1, uh, especially with the injuries that you had, it was, we just mentioned that Calabria got injured during the game, Kier got injured during the game. Did Salah Makers as well get yeah. injured during the game? Yeah, no, well, it was pulled out. It's not something crazy if Salah's Maker, but it, it well, was subbed. Calabria will be three months. Yeah. I think he airs 15 days. But no matter what, Milan find ways to win the game. What what does it come down to? It's 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 the mentality. It's the group work. It's uh, what's expected from you from uh, from up above over there, from whoever sitting on the bench. Everybody does not give up until it's the end of the game. Mm. So whether it's one minute, whether it's three minutes, whether it's five minutes, or whether it's half an hour, everybody's mm. got the same laser focus objective. I said, we have to do all we can to win the game. If we feel that we, we did our best and we don't come up with the top results, that's great. But uh, if we think that uh, we have the settle for the tie because we only have two, three minutes left mm -hmm. and we don't try, that's very bad. That's a bad, bad, bad karma and mentality. But you even from a guy like Balotore who stepped in for Theron Andes, you see what he's he the guy that scores the goal. Right, right. And look the way Krunic, Krunic is a sub, he comes in as a sub and then I would say, okay, maybe Krunic is going to take the back line with the Tonali. Instead, Krunic was the right there. Oops, sorry. Krunic was right up there into the box, just redirecting with the head that ball the ballo to Ray with a little flat piatto he say, we say in Italian plate. piatto not a plate that's what it is piatto, in Greek piede piatto means flat. thing mm. with inside of the foot it just, just like a square right ball mm. yes square ball boom right in and that was beautiful and then Leao to put the cherry on the cake mm. he just on the break away from Rebic Rebic what a player man Rebic if he's healthy he's gonna pay high dividends for us so I'm just warning all of you right now so regardless whether Ibra Ibrahimovic is healthy or whether uh, what's his name uh, Giroud is scoring or is now 100% on that on the on the top of his condition we have so many players that at any time they can uh, put the game away for us we have Brian Diaz that is not scared to, to shoot even Calabria besides the fact that he got injured Calabria takes shots from outside I don't know if you have noticed since last year Calabria has been shooting the ball from outside anybody on AC Milan can score Pobeka can score we have uh, uh, what's mm -hmm. his name uh, uh, DK uh, De Catalar can, he can score a lot of people well, he hasn't scored yet doesn't but. matter he will score just once he started he's gonna put an extra warning on your heads he's gonna park himself into the Juventus, <clears throat> the Juventini says, the Interisti says, that guy is going to be one at the top. Just give him a couple more months until he finds his groove and his confidence comes up. And then he's going to put everybody out of your own misery. He's going to make yourself regret that you didn't pick up AC Milan to be number one. And we're going to be number one again. So jump off your point on the Catalar. Yeah. For you right now, it's not about what he does this year. It's what he can do next year. No, no, right? he's going to do it this year. The fact of the matter is he needs time to adjust. And yeah. if you look at how Tonali 
has really stepped into his role with AC Milan. Mm -hmm. His first year was terrible. Mm -hmm. So the fact that he's getting the time to play, can get accustomed to Serie A and, the, and, and kind of break down these defenses, he's going to be a fantastic player for you for next year. This year, he might pull off a, a good tail end of the season, but the important thing is your expectations are not so high that you crumble the player. He's a young player, he needs time to develop, and uh, he should have that. Then as far as Milan is concerned, it seems that any player that plays does well and understands what it is to wear the AC Milan shirt. Mm. And there's a winning mentality there that comes from the locker room where you have a lot of top players, even if they're not on the field right now, they still have a presence in the locker room. You have Pioli, who was the leader last year and is still the leader, which is I think is a difference between Inter's, let's say, mm -hmm. Conte's Inter, where he won the Scudetto, but he wasn't able to cement the winning mentality into that team for that second year because mm -hmm. that's what really develops uh, a team. Um, so you have this Milan team that now is in the second year with Pioli. The team is a well-oiled machine where they're going to fight till every uh, you know last drop. And the injuries are definitely something to worry about yeah, because yeah. no matter what, you need your players to be able to play because... Maybe versus Empoli, you can, you know, get that win. But versus other teams, the chances of you coming back after time one one in the ninety second minute is is not very high. Let's put it that way. But I think still all credit to Milan for what they were able to do, going you know not necessarily down, but getting tied on within the ninety second minute to then come back literally in a minute from and score the goal and then get the three one is massive. And it goes to show, uh, we were talking about it off camera, where the teams that are able to, you know, get these wins when the team necessarily is not playing great are the teams that go very far and, and win the championship, right? The win the Scudetto. I respectfully disagree to the only on one point mm -hmm. that AC Milan, you know, the only for the last year is the second year. This is already the third <clears> year. There are three, there are, uh, we are three years already into this path. The first year, it was just... A, you know, Maldini getting cemented over there with mm -hmm. Massara and all the stuff. Mm -hmm. But now, now this is the third year that this group here is just adjusting few things around and we are now in the position to do damage into the Serie A and into the Champions League. Mm, no, you're right. As far as the third year. And the fact that, that we are missing a bunch of players, Pete, we're not complaining about yeah, it yeah. because it's part of the part of the game. I was saying as far as the second year, meaning that last year you won the Scudetto. Oh, okay. So like that winning mentality was really established, I think, last year. The year prior, you still have those hiccups. And we, came, thing, we, came, we came second. So uh, yeah. we were right yeah, there. Yeah, but coming second is not winning. And it, it's a difference. I'm saying, no, you're no, learning, the, you're not, you're there's not, you're a difference. Because you're going to become, yeah. Right. No, I'm not messing not. I'm saying there's a difference. Like Yo. Inter, last year, not to cut you off, go, go. but last year, the, that, yeah. the breakdown of, of that Inter team, you know, Inzaghi's team, did not win the Scudetto when they had a massive uh, lead, right, in, in, what was it, when they came, in January, whatever it was, I forgot the exact points, but we had a decent amount of lead and the team just went down, and that's bad. Mm. You made a, a point that you were talking about off camera, I don't want to go too much into Inter, mm -hmm. but I think you should make it because it's relevant to what you just said, and it was about the spirit of the team and about Pioli. And I think this was the first week that I noticed it was when Inter goes down or things don't go well, I see a lot of finger pointing and a lot of negative energy from a lot of the players. Skriniar, Bastoni, Barella, constantly throwing their hands up, waving their hands around, blaming each other. And now I don't want to read too much into it because sometimes it's good that you want to do that. But as far as Milan, I see even when they go 1-1, there's a different attitude and a different spirit. And again, I don't want to reach too much, but I just speak from personal experience. I remember when I was there to watch Italy against Sweden, Ventura's team, the one that we, the first game in Sweden. And I remember I was very close to Ventura and I could see his energy. And if you remember, Belotti had a ball that came in, headed it, and we missed. It was a great chance, probably the best chance that we had between the two matches. And the negative energy that... Ventura gave to the team. He took a bottle of water, threw it, and sat like a little child who didn't get his way, which is kind of the opposite of what I see at Milan, that mm. even when things don't go right, they give off the right kind of feeling. And you compared Milan winning against Empoli to the opposite of what Inter do. Mm -hmm. No, and I think you hit it on the, the, the money, where you have 
the leadership and when you have, you know, a, a sense of calmness in the locker room, you're going to see that in on the field. And it stems even from the top. You know, when there's a healthy uh, societa, when there's a healthy club, even on the business side, it's going to show the the hard work that is, is, is put into it on the field. Uh, you know what? Let me be... Uh, to, be, to make your point, Marco, when uh, when Giroud was called out and Rebic was brought in, when uh, AC Milan scored with Rebic, the one the celebrating the most was Giroud. Giroud was going out of his mind. I don't know if you've seen him, but uh, that was stuck to me. I said, hey, look at the chemistry though, that those people have. They are competing for the same job, but look how, how close they are with each other. So Giroud goes out of his mind when AC Milan scores the one nothing, especially on Rebic stuff. And then again, when Leao scored, because uh, mm. Giroud technically, even though if he's not competing directly with Leao, those are the two leaders uh, of AC Milan for putting the the numbers of uh, goals, oh, I'm sorry, to put the numbers uh, uh, of balls behind the, the the goal line over there. And the chemistry is there. Those people, they feed off each other. The energy is there. It's all over the place. All the bench players, even Adley, look Adley, the way he was, comp- he was celebrating. Adley was, didn't play one minute. Maybe he's going to get some uh, playing time on the Champions League. But Adley, it's not the one that is, uh, you know, sitting on the bench over there. He's jumping off his... Off his uh, it's unbelievable. I said to myself, look at this guy. He's not playing. He's sitting on the bench. He hasn't been used much so far, but I guess he's waiting <clears throat> for his opportunity. And the way he celebrated after the goal, that means that the group is very, very, very united. Together. And, uh, you know, they all feed off each other's energy. And I think that makes for a big difference. Mike, there was uh, l- two weeks ago, I think Allegri put out a quote saying, uh, I'm missing all my players. If you see half of Milan's team go out injured, mm-hmm. you'll see how much they struggle. Uh, he's kind of wished it into existence because now Milan are missing a lot of guys, Mike Magnan, Teo Hernandez, Calabria, Kier, Salamakers, makers, um, obviously all for different lengths of time. How do you see Milan dealing with that, especially because they're going to play against Juventus this weekend? And Chelsea. Yeah, that's true. I mean, it's going to be but tough. My comparisons because Allegri yeah. said the quote and then Milan. How do you think that they deal with that? It's obviously going to be tough, but it's not something there. It's new to them. They've Even last season, they had... Uh, I think speed bumps in terms of injuries and players not being 100%, especially with Zlatan not being there, who's been the start of Giroud taken in. And now they also have a region in case things happen, but they have a lot of considerable players. Anto was mentioning Calabria too out for a while. Uh, but the thing with Milan is I think they just have a championship mentality. So whether the Primavera, Primavera player plays or the first player, I think they all are hungry to win. Mm-hmm. And I think that's very hard for a team to build. And they are the champions of Italy, so they really are defending something. They're showing that they're the big dogs in this league. And I thought that maybe they fall off a little bit, but they're, they picked up perfectly from last season. They really look strong. Even in the derby, they look so convincing against Inter. So it's obviously going to affect them just like it's going to affect any other team. But I don't think it's going to be a huge uh, fallback just because I think they, they got a, what they got the dog in them, as they say. Is, is Leao... Before we move on, is Leao the best player in Serie A? For his position, it's one. It is for his position. Kuvara? No, it's no, no. Kuvara, Kuvara. Same position. No, Leao is by far much better than Kuvara. Okay, explain. For his position, yes. But in terms of who's the best on AC Milan, for me, it's Mike Magnan. Everything rotates through him. My question is: Is Leao the best player in in Serie A? Uh, For me, no. No. I don't know. I don't see anyone with the quality that Leao has. I think when he wants to play, it's Magnan for he's, me. Magnan he's, is the best. He's unplayable. His first few steps, there's no one in the league that defend that can defend him because he's got this burst of speed that's impossible to stop. And now you back it with his scoring ability, which is improving. It feels like every game, and he also has a humbleness about his game as well. Like he knows that. I mean, stupid example, but. Even Zlatan, it's Zlatan's birthday, you know, calling him a legend and wishing him a happy birthday. Like, he knows his place in the team and he knows what to give to them. For me, he is superstar level, superstar level of Serie A, and he is becoming the face of the league, in my opinion. I think, look, he's got excellent skills. He's, he's still too young. He's still a little green for my taste, but 
he he has the tendency of missing and be a little cocky sometimes, missing those easy chances. He has a lot of chances. The game will have been put away for AC Milan on the first half. And I think he doesn't really take, I'm not saying he doesn't take his job a little too seriously, but there are times that you need to be nasty and you have to be nasty. Bury those uh, those easy chances. Why do we have to wait until the last minute for him to make something happen? I mean, that's the maturity. I think. I think it's about time for him to mature at that, mm-hmm. at, that kind, at this level. AC Milan is AC Milan. It's not any other team. On AC Milan, any chances that you have, you have to be more concrete. You have to just just put yeah. it right in don't wait until uh, the game uh, it, it becomes a problem that one nothing for us it was a, it could have been a two or three nothing uh, on the second half already but uh, we didn't and then we had to just uh, you know uh, beg lady luck over there for uh, on the uh, way on the overtime to to score again with uh, with uh, uh, Leao and uh, and what's his name uh, um, Paulo Toure so uh, what I'm trying to say is for me in terms of skills and leadership role I think it's Mike Magnan is the best player in Serie A. No, no, it's no way. No. I think Leao, if we look at a prototype of a player that you want, is that. So he's got everything, the full package, the speed, the physicality, the technique. Like he can really do what he wants and he can score how he wants. I do see, I think with, with that package, it comes down to him, like Antonio said, his maturing into his role. And I think he's... Very close. I think he's very close, but he's still not so much that he lacks that killer instinct because right. when he's on, right. he's on. But it's just that you want him. Like I think he has everything in in, in his toolbox mm-hmm. to be a Mbappe, like that type of player. Mm-hmm. So like the way that Mbappe uh, is literally every game, like not even just every game, but like every minute, a a danger. Like, he, people are scared. Like, there's games with Leao. Like he has if, lapses. Leao's yeah, got lapses. I mean, but listen, any player Everyone, does. From every time he disappears from but the every, field, every you don't even know does. that he's, he's on the field. He but, has lapses. That but then, very, but, every, but every then he has that, that magic that no other... That's For me, you, you're, like, touched with this ability that in a second you could change the game. change the game. Yeah, like, absolutely. it's not something that you even work on. It's just he's innately yeah, he has, has it in his game. That's So I think it's more so like a... Kind of like a Matrix effect. I don't know if you've ever seen the movie. No. But literally... So, not how does it go? It's a, it's a long movie. Do it, do it, do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be the first, it's gonna be a long do it, do it. Yeah, exactly. So, pretty much, he's in the matrix. He, he unlocks the code, I guess. Oh, wow. And he's able to see the bullets before they, they like, arrive. Slow motion. All right, so Antonio, so, so he the unlocks. Like yeah, so he doesn't even have to move that quick. He could just okay. move out like, like cool. this. That was quick. Like that. <laughs> okay. You know? Mike, where do you stand on this? For Ilao? Is he the best player in Serie A? It's hard to say. I think he's one of. I, I think it's very hard to top make three. him top three. I'm not, not number one. Make him uh, unofficially the top, the best player. Because right now there's informed players right now. Like, are you describing from last season to this or just this season? Because there's a lot of back and forths on this. But I definitely think he's on the top tier of players in Serie A for sure. There's no question about that. Let's go on to your team. That hmm. for me, you guys lack uh you lack a player like this. It's what I kept constantly thinking about during the Roma game, especially because Paolo Dybala was another guy that you were looking towards. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it felt like destiny that number one, he got an assist against Juventus, the team that didn't believe in him, and scores against Inter, again, another team that decided to go for another option. Mm-hmm. Uh, and both of those teams kind of lacking that sort of player with the creative spark. I know you feel like Inter played well. You lost in a game that, personally, before the game, I said there's no way Inter can lose this just because of the amount of pressure that was on uh, Inzaghi and on Inter, and you're playing at home, coming off the loss to Udinese. How'd you see the game? Yeah, I think... So, they played well enough. That's how I would I would des- describe it. Because I think maybe they didn't deserve to lose based on the, the chances. I think it was a pretty balanced game. Now... Uh, you know, Inter at home should show their dominance, even though this is a much different Roma team than recent years. Um, they have quality players and are explosive in their in their counterattacks and what they can do on the field going forward. But just Inter in general, uh, I think as far as recent games, this was one of the better games that Inter has played, um, which is it saying much? I don't know. Mm-mm. But what we're what we're missing, especially in a three five two formation that Inzaghi's playing, is that person to take on the man, take on the defender. So if you don't have that to create that 
2v1 or create that numerical advantage, now you're kind of just playing chess where you're moving one piece. And if it's so slow, the, the defense is going to be able to, to match every move. So you need that spark. Mm. You need somebody to come in, be creative, to beat a man on a dribble, to then now force the movement of the team and, and find the openness. I mean, listen, we hit, even in the second half, you know, Chanaloglu had an amazing free kick, hits the, the crossbar. You know, we had opportunities to score. And the only problem is that for me, what I see is this this Inter team is too fragile. At a, you know, one shot, it's a goal against. One opportunity creates havoc and there's a little blackout. So, like, there's too many of these missed, uh, I guess, uh, I guess concentration problems with mm. this Inter team. And, you know, I don't know if it's within the locker room. I don't know if there needs to be a, a spark with a, a change of a formation, maybe. That there has, needs, mm -hmm. they, they just, they, it seems like there's too many problems. To, to let in 13 goals in, you know, these amount of games, I forgot exactly the amount. Mm. Eight games. Eight games. That's, that's way a lot. too much. That's a four lot. losses. And, and four You've losses. Lost half your yeah, games. You lost Last half year, you game. lost four games yeah. the entire season. Exactly. So these are, these are, that's bad. I, and at that point, like, you'd rather even tie games because at least you don't lose, right? Mm -hmm. The mentality is you didn't lose. But too many games uh, lost and too many opportunities gone missing and just, just like, especially the defense, it's, it's just disappointing for me. That's a good point. The defense. You know, I'll tell you why, Marco. I'll tell you, it's just a great point that Peter just brought up right now, the defense. The defense is supposed to be the area where Inter should be excelling because they have nothing but top of the line names. You got Bastoni, you got De Vrij, you got a uh, 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 you know, screen yard. And then, uh, you know, the fact that you played the 3-5-2, this is the best defender with Andanovic who was the number number one all the time. I, I, Andanovic, Andanovic, miracolo, miracolo, miracolo. So Andanovic, <laughs> those three or four players with this... Are we talking about the same goalkeeper? Yeah. So what happened? Andanovic, yeah. Skriniar, Bastoni, and now they brought even... Uh, Thank God, actually, you brought in... Uh, Acerbi. Oh, no, no. Yeah, Acerbi. Acerbi. Thank God you brought in because at least you have an option uh, yeah. to try to fix things around. But this is what's letting you down. And this is supposed to be the strongest, you know, mm -hmm. uh, a foundation for you to just bring the game up mm -hmm. and just uh, just be, uh, be, in other words, don't worry about it because yeah. we are there for you guys on the back. But this is what's becoming the major problem. Your back, your defense is not good. It's either that, they have, that this year I see lack of confidence and there is too many rumors, uh, uh, you know, swirling around some of the players that they're rumored to to leave. But every, is every, one of them. But every Listen, team has rumors you don't around want to their players. With that, There's rumors around Leal, but look what Leal I, does. Well, I, well come on. one thing is having a rumor that it, it's just a rumor. One thing is just something that is more than a rumor. Yeah, Do you understand what I'm you're, saying? You're a rumor is a no, right oh, wait, Let me just give you the difference. In the AC Milan, we have noises. A noise is just some some sort of a background noise, like a mosquito. In Inter, it's it's a rumor, like boom, boom, <laughs> boom, like what boom. Album. Hello. Listen, rumors. Every rumors. team has to yeah. deal with them. Every player knows the. But that's not an excuse, like Marco said. But the thing is, that's not, I don't even think that's the excuse. If you wanted to say like background noise, I think it's more so. Uh, Zhang might have put the team up for sale. The 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 management not being able to make moves on players quote-unquote, Bremer, Dybala, because you couldn't fortify the team. You let Perisic go because you didn't have the money to, to spend on Perisic or you didn't come to an agreement during the season to let Perisic go. So there's a lot of those things that are involved. And I think it also, like I said, what happens within uh, the team, within the Societ uh, La Societa... We don't know what's in the locker room. Not, we don't have leadership on the locker room. But besides right leadership, I don't even think it's a question about leadership. It's more so just when you have uneasiness or players not knowing what's going on or whatever, mm -hmm. there there always seems to be something that transpires into the, into the field, transpires. right? And what, what I see is that a lot of the mistakes that the Inter team make, they keep on doing it. So mm. that's a problem. When you keep on making the same mistake over and over again, the same goals, letting it like Smalling, you have to be marking Smalling. You mm. cannot have him have that opportunity. Skriniar is behind like, him. Yeah, Skriniar, you like, come on. This is these are things that set pieces is a matter of concentration. Mm -hmm. mm. It's not something that happens. It was a freak goal. Like there's mm -hmm. chances that you can that happens. But on set pieces, if you're a top team, 
you know exactly where you have to be and you have to be marking that person. And that's a lapse of concentration. And to bring up your point about Handanovic, obviously he's an older Handanovic. It's not the same Handanovic. He's still a very good goalkeeper. Mm -hmm. But there needs to be a question where uh, Inzaghi, you have to make a decision because guess what? The fans right now are not too happy with Handanovic because I think even Rightfully the Dybala, so. Dybala's goal, you know, it's it's blockable for a top goalkeeper. Yeah, I think I think a... you can make that save. If you have a hand to it, mm -hmm. yeah. you can make that. It wasn't hit ha extremely hard. Yes, you have to still make the save and the goalies, you know, uh, can mess up. Right. But if you're a top goalkeeper better, and you have Onana on the bench, now you're not talking about having mm -hmm. Radu on the bench. You have Onana that or you're Tata supposed Roshano. to. Yeah, mm -hmm. you, you have Onana that's supposed to. Inzaghi, you have to put your money down mm -hmm. and say, hey, Onana is our goalkeeper moving forward. Mm -hmm. Because guess what? If you have Onana playing the Champions League, there's got to be a reason there. But Pete, this is what's him. throwing you off. I'll tell you That's why, Marco. Just let me make this point and then uh, then you, you just go. This is what is going to throw you off. It's the, fact, it's the fact that you're creating this, uh, this kind of uncertainty into the hands of those top players. You know, now Onana is supposed to be starting uh, on the Champions League, probably even on the Campionato. Bastoni is nervous. If you see the body language of, uh, of Barella, every time that uh, somebody whistles a, fa a foul against uh, uh, Inter, Barella goes to the ref. And that body language is very conducive to have a lot of nervous mentality you're not playing with a championship mentality you're just too nervous on the field and you and everybody can feel it, including even the spectatory and i think that led perfectly into the team that actually won the game who we need to give credit to mm -hmm. and that's roma because they were organized they were concentrated all the things the opposite they were saying about inter roma did and yeah maybe it wasn't beautiful they didn't create as many chances as they did in in their previous matches it wasn't that type of match I think in the second half, they, they looked a lot better than what they did in the first half. And they played the game the way that they had to make it played. And, you know, what I saw is that it was more of an 11 players that were just fighting for each other. They were they were moving in the same direction. They were, each teammate was helping each other out and picking up slack. Smalling had a, came up big, besides just the goal, in the defense for Roma as well. It was all these little moments. And then when you also have a talent like... Paulo Dybala, who so many teams passed on this summer, he has done phenomenal. That is the world-class ability. That is that little lack that at any moment, the man can change the game. Yes, we could say Handanovic should have saved it, but either way, Dybala is such a, cha a game changer. Is he the thing that solves all the problems of Roma? No. no, but he gives him that edge in important matches where the big criticism of Roma is that they don't beat the top teams they went to the San Siro. They went to the San Siro with the coaches under pressure, with the team who needed to win a game, and they, they came away with the win. It was massive. And Mourinho wasn't even sitting physically on the bench. He was on the stand. But you know what? I think that even helped them a little bit. I, I, oh, think, yeah? that, I think that made the team could be, could be. have a little bit more of a bite to make, to make him proud. He also took a really courageous decision in sitting out Tammy Abraham, which I thought was pretty ridiculous, to be honest with you. And listen... In the end, when it works out and when you win, you're the genius. He was celebrating in his bus, and you gotta say, <clears throat> excuse me, you gotta say that this Roma team, I believe it was 10 Serie A games in a row that Inter always, always has Roma's number. Things have finally changed. Yeah, but the stats are meant to be broken. Don't you don't you remember what I, I told you a few a few weeks ago? Okay. So this Inter it's becoming We're talking about Roma. I know, but we're talking about uh, our case Roma. But a stat is a stat, is a number. Soccer, you have to play the ball. Make the ball rolling, okay? Soccer is soccer. Stats are stats. Stats is mathematician and it's, you know, pens and just reads. The ball has the roll and is round. That's Mike, what do you think about uh, Roma rolling the ball into the back of the net? Like Beautiful. Inter. Beautiful. I don't, for Inter, I wanted to say, uh, I don't know. I think I think I'm starting to be believe Gaetano in terms of Inzaghi, saying I thought I to be honest I thought Gaetano was being a little harsh. I was like, what's what's your problem with Inzaghi? He's not that bad. He's not that bad. And then I'm starting to agree with him. I feel like I'm on the other side of the pedestal on him. I think time time's running out for him. I don't think he has enough what it takes to coach uh, to coach a top team like Inter. As you could see, they're losing the motivation. I think he was hanging on of what Conte was doing and hopefully was riding it. Till the last, till it's on, 
till it has no more wheels left, and he thought he can implement his own kind of style. But he's not learning from his mistakes. He's doing the same things. He's not motivating his squad. His team's not playing like they should be like a contender for the Scudetto. I don't see any hunger from them. And they shouldn't be losing to Roma when you're up 1-0. Um, and it's very worrying for Inter. Because I had I, a lot of people had them win the Scudetto. And this, <laughs> I, would, I would change my prediction completely. Because, and I think a lot of it has to do with Inzaghi. They got good players now. I know some, they're facing injuries just like every other team. But right now they would be struggling <laughs> for top four for me because they look, Horrendous. Nice. Honest, per, and how about Roma? For me. How about At Roma? Roma, they did well coming back uh, from 2-1. Even when Mourinho not on the bench, Dybala is so good, man. That guy, I feel like he just demands power and respect whenever he's on the field. You know he can do anything unpredictable. And that's why you have him. And bringing Tam, Tammy, I think that was smart for Mourinho uh, having him on the bench since he, he wasn't his usual Tammy from last season. And he maybe wants him to starve him a little bit so he can get a little hungry for the goals. But they did what they could, mm -hmm. and they got the job done overall. And I think Roma are going to have a pretty good season. Yo, good funny funny to mention Gaetano before. Gaetano, he, mm. he's got an extra wavelength that we don't get to see. Oh, yeah. What did so, he say? He, he, what did he say in the text? He, before the game, before the game, he said, he, before the game, <laughs> actually, before the game started, he said, he put Roma winning in Milan. Did, he, oh, you did, did he put Roma winning? Yes, he did. Mm. And then, That's and a hot then take. What wow. you, you saying about uh, Gaetano having this kind of a problem, quote unquote, with Inzaghi? I agree. He's he's he right. see what we don't see because we are normal people. He's Catano is not normal. Yeah. Catano is extra. <laughs> We're the peasants. He's yeah. the boss, right? <laughs> but he sent the message. I don't understand what it means. He said, "Don't forget to mention that Roma was going to do well versus Inter." Well, what but does that mean? on this prediction, he made a prediction, prediction. even before the game. He predicted that Roma was going uh, to to take the game away from mm. Inter. Yeah, it's uh, I, I mean, listen, it played into their hands. The only thing I'll say, if I'm being critical, because. When you look at the performance, I mean, mm. Roma didn't put in an amazing performance. You get the win, you don't care. Who It doesn't matter. They played off of the weaknesses of Inter. I just can't stand the Matic-Cristante duo in the midfield. I don't care. I don't like it at all. It's too defensive. The ball does not get moved the proper way. That's one thing that I can't, I can't buy into. Mm. And I think that when they did change that up, and when it does move, even Cristante, I mean, he loses the ball... I think he lost the ball in like the 90th minute at one point where he's trying to just overdo things. For me, the two of them together, they don't work. Marco, don't you got work. Spinazzola, you got Pellegrini. Uh, to be honest with you, we're talking Matic, about Matic, different positions. Matic, he didn't play a bad game. I like the way he plays. I'm saying I'm not. I'm not arguing Matic didn't play a good game. I don't like the two of them together. Oh, but over there on, on, the, on the that double pivot in front, I think two, they're two, way more dynamic if they put Pellegrini and Matic or Pellegrini and Cristante. I just think that the balance is formed a little bit better because neither of them really like to take the ball up or really is technical this enough. Zaniolo, I, I wish you would be criticizing more Zaniolo because Zaniolo, it's not there. I don't think this all of this hype about Zaniolo. I think Roma will have done a better a better job for to let him go. Maybe just to returning Juventus. from from injury. I know, but yeah, 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 come on, uh, hey, you are, yeah, you die young, you have to be it. <laughs> You, you have, you have I, be sure. I think he brings. I think he brings a different dynamic where he's he's like he's like a horse in. I'm not in crazy about him. For I'm him. not crazy he about bring, him. He brings that energy, and I think when he's paired with DiBala, they they kind of complement each other well because one runs a little bit more, one can go at his defender, uh, where DiBala is a little bit more creative and a little bit more thoughtful. So personally, I don't see that as a problem. But let's move on. Talk about Napoli against Torino, which was, I thought this was going to be a way tougher game for Napoli. I was hoping It's pretty much done in the first half. They, they went up 3-0 uh, against a uh, Torino side under Juric, who's very well coached, in my opinion. He puts out a team that's difficult to beat. Tactically, they're organized. Even if quality-wise, of course, they can't compare to, uh, to Napoli. It's funny, I was listening to Juric's uh, press conference before the game, and he said, we don't have enough of a bite. We don't, we don't, uh, we're not football. We're not, we're not witty. We don't make the foul. We don't make that extra foul. But I don't think there was anything he could have done more against an Napoli side who's just rolling on all cylinders. For me, best team in Serie A this season so far. Everything works sorry, out. You said Spalletti. You said sorry. Did I say sorry? You didn't say sorry at all. I think I heard sorry. You're oh, obsessed with sorry. sorry. <laughs> uh, I, I, think that they're, I, I think that they're rolling on all cylinders. Kim, who's come in, has been fantastic in the defense. Of course, it's a small sample size, but my gosh, his replacement of Koulibaly looks looks genius at this point. Uh, and then, again, midfield. For me, midfield is always the most important 
position in in a field in a team. And when you have a good midfield, you can make up no matter where you would lack. So even when they lose Osiman, they've got Rasbadori and Simeone coming. I mean, they're just they're fantastic. They're, stacked they're amazing on top. to watch. To me, they're stacked on on midfield and and forward uh, the forward line. But I think if Napoli is gonna is gonna is gonna fail, it's gonna be the defensive line. I mean, I like it a lot, Kim. And I like uh, what they have like right Mani, now. So they're far. all playing really. Even Mario but Roy. Said, Can you imagine complimenting yeah, Mario Roy? Mario but Roy. he's actually been good. Well, if they're going to fail, if they're going to crack, if some crack is going to show on uh, at some point on the Napoli uh, his game is going to be on defense because uh, one of them is Mario Roy that I'm not that big, that, that high on him. And the other one, it could be maybe Meret, mm. even though he's been playing a spectacular, uh, I think Meret deserve even uh, the, to, to start on the Italian national team. But to take away from there, I said, the Napoli at some point is going to crack and I think the defense is going to be the problem. I mean, it's not so much that they're going to crack, it's just during the season, you can't yeah. win every game and it's normal. So it's w- more so, and besides them cracking, it's how do they respond to problems? How do they respond to injuries? No. How do they respond to losing a game? Though That's the important part w- within a team winning a Scudetto. But the Napoli team, I think they have great depth. They have players that yeah. I, I can start you know, on every team in Serie A, whether it's Simeone, who last year went off with, with Verona, Raspadori, I think we saw him already with the Italian national mm-hmm. team, what he was able to do. So, and, and you have Oshiman. So, like, all these different players mm-hmm. also add a different dynamic to the Napoli attack. Like, if you wanted to change the way to the approach of a game, you can have Oshiman that's running through the channels and, and, and you know, going with the long ball. Or you can have Raspadori who's going to be able to come in, play that Falso Nueve, and 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 change something, and then obviously the big Kavara. the big guy is is Kavara Shelia, who mm. this kid has been unbelievable, and uh, you know uh, he's an exciting player to watch, mm-hmm. but also what he's able to do on the field, mm-hmm. I think a lot of we we take it for granted to a certain extent, but he's so smart, mm-hmm. and that's what I love about the player. Like he doesn't do something just because, right? He does it with a purpose, and I think mm-hmm. for any young guy that wants uh, to mm-hmm. play. You know, it's understanding what you do and why you do it. So the idea to dribble is not just to have fun with it; mm-hmm. it's to to escape, to get through, to make a pass, to make a to hit a shot. So, uh, no, Napoli, I think is is fantastic and and rightfully uh, deserves to be on that first place. Uh, it's so well said about Kvada, though, because what I always think about, I think about players that make you want to play the game. And when you're playing, as a kid, I just, I remember, you know, my dad would show me videos of Roberto Baggio. The v- he'd pull out VHSs and put them <laughs> in before we would go to play at Diker Park. And he'd say, look at this move that he would do. And then you want to mimic it. For me, Kvada has that kind of level mm-hmm. of, obviously, I'm not comparing him to Baggio. But what I'm saying is, like, when you see him play, you want to go play. Like, you want to do his moves. Like, he brings that excitement to the league that I think we so desperately need. And he has that added ability that, like you said, he can open up space. He makes the channel. He's not scared to go direct. And I love that about a player. So I don't remember a player who's been signed that's popped into a team and has had more of an impact than Quara. I don't know Napoli if you have two Mike. Th- as two players that uh, they make in the fluidity of the games. First of all, it's so beautiful to watch. But uh, Lobotka and uh, Kvara, those are the different makers of Napoli right now. To me, those two players, if one of them gets injured, or uh, it's going to be a different Napoli. But uh, to me, Lobotka and uh, Kvara, they are uh, the two the two most dangerous players in Napoli. One, he controls the tempo, and Kvara, like you just said, is so unpredictable. It will take you one-on-one, and it will create a lot of space because you don't know. You never know whether the guy's going to pass the ball or he's going to put the ball deep, or he's going to take you one-on-one and just create something from nothing. So... Uh, yeah. The ball is on you, Mike. You're talking to Lobotka. How about Angisa too? That guy's playing like a superstar, scoring two goals. Mm-hmm. You don't know if he's a striker. He's back there, uh, slide tackling, getting the ball away. He's all over the place. Fulham must feel so weird that they sold him when he was over there, and now he's a completely changed player. And I think we got to give a lot of credit to Spalletti. A lot of people were probably egging him on, saying, "Oh, he's not a coach to win the Scudetto, or he hasn't won anything." But he, I think he gets the best out of a lot of these players. They're making them play very well together. Uh, Gvara, of course, great match as usual. But the midfield with Lubotka and Gvara, we were with Ludo the other day, and he was he was talking about how they, they dance like a little, they have a little tango dance, a little, they look like ballerinas dance on the field. They compliment. How did it go? 
I don't know exactly. How did the dance go? It was like one of these bad boys. What is that? Tango? I think it was a. That's how. I think their dancing is much better. A little ballroom dancing. Yeah, I'm no professional. I'm trying to imitate. Well, I dance well too. Didn't you see me yesterday? You look pretty decent. Yeah, you guys are wild yesterday. With some from some. You see my moves, Pete. You see my moves. Do the chicken one. Do the. No, you wanted me to show the chicken one right now. Show the octopus one. Oh. <laughs> well, what oh are you doing? <laughs> hey, he's bringing the octopus on the table. <laughs> <laughs> For those that don't know, they went to an octopus party. It looks like Squidward. Yeah. I don't. He actually looked like a spider instead of an octopus. A tarantella, right? I don't know why you guys went to an octopus party. Uh-huh. Well, it's uh, it's the it yeah. was the fiftieth anniversary yeah. of the Caduti di Superga yeah. for the Mola di Bari uh, mm-hmm. soccer club mm-hmm. that I played for. Mm-hmm. And um, You're a legend they there. do a Sagra del Polpo, where mm-hmm. in Italy there was always every, every town has yeah, a feast, feast, a food yeah. feet fest. Fast, mm-hmm. fast. And um, for this particular one, it was octopus. And and you know, Antonio, I don't know if we put the video out, but Antonio, no, we didn't put him out. I don't know if we can. Is a master of uh, of octopus. That he really is able to domesticate an octopus. Hey! One more. One more. That's good for you. That's the best protein. Hey! we go. <laughs> you got that right. But you, you got, got that right. I Raw cooked. <laughs> Raw cooked. You name it. Antonio. Well, the funniest thing was, uh, so for little backstory, we posted a little bit on social media, but we also, we played a game uh, Sunday morning uh, and we had Dre Cordero and Poppy Miller uh, who came out from uh, the Paramount guys and they came play to play a game with us. And the funniest thing is you told them about this party, I guess, because afterwards, uh, Poppy asked me, she said, you know, don't you keep talking about like eating raw octopus? Like, was it, is that real is that's obviously fake right he can't do that and then i forward the videos that you said that you, you did well you you said yeah, you bobby said. this is real oh yeah yeah yeah, you, yeah. We've been yeah, yeah okay. and nobody could believe it but i was trying to explain to them that where you're from that's a very usual thing it's normal okay to eat raw octopus yeah we made mike eating the octopus in the same he did not like it at all what do you mean he didn't like mike's it? face was no, no it was delicious it was delicious, it was delicious. Should oh, I, can we post a video <laughs> can we just post a screenshot of <laughs> your face is, when you ate I, it i made a rookie mistake i didn't add lemon to it there you that, go that's you why i messed so up then you say you don't put lemon no, i'll tell you what you said in the video you don't the put lemon. octopus no, I'll tell you, let me explain okay the octopus when he's sitting on ice because you have to keep it on ice before you serve it. It takes a little bit uh, uh, of the, the, the fresh water the flavor taste. From it. So for you to be serving an octopus raw or a sip or a carrot fish raw, yeah, you have to be, let him sit on a, a, like a salt ice. In mm-hmm. other words, put mm-hmm. some salt over there. The to water has the to flavor, be salty right? water. But my question, in the video, from the, in the video uh, the didn't flavor. you say it's more of American style to put lemon on it? Yes. Well, in Italy, first of like you no don't have it with lemon. Raw with, I don't so. have it. I don't have to have it with lemon. It's just so, so nice. It's just raw. Like the authentic way that you eat in body. It's raw. It's raw. raw. Listen okay. to me. Actually, the calamari with them alive. The octopus not really alive. Yeah, but I don't the know calamari. The calamari, I'll challenge you. You guys are going to like it so much. <laughs> yeah, the you calamari guys, challenge. But listen to me. You guys are going to like even the, the, the... Squid Games has nothing to do with yes. you. <laughs> no, listen. Even the cuttlefish alive. And you guys, no, once I you try the first time, you're going to become addicted. Okay, maybe we'll uh, maybe we'll You're pop in some of the videos. Addicted, but anyway, you. that's uh that was that's how they spent their Sunday, and that's uh that's even that's it a was uh, Papi. If you're listening to this podcast, it was so nice to meet you in person for the first time. And uh, I don't know if I should be revealing that Papi now is an AC Milan fan. You know, maybe I mean, behind that's the, actually uh, that's true. Behind yeah. the she said that so you would stop maybe, talking. That's yeah, maybe true. she did it just to make me happy. But uh, Papi, she's a good player. She's a good player. I wish she would have just uh, tackled you a little stronger. But uh, she kicked me. She's got a beautiful ball control. She knows how to pass the ball. She knows left how to move foot. on the field. Left foot. Hey, and, Dre is good too. Yeah, well, I think Papi. <laughs> oh, Papi's better than Dre. Yes. Oh, Ooh, that's because she was on your team. <laughs> <laughs> that's well, why. no, she did a great job. 
Anyway, right. and we won, right, Anto? And we did, yeah, we did. Perfect. Yeah, their their team won. They scored eleven goals. We scored twelve. But uh, yeah, but they, the golden, they, these three, wait, wait, these three goal, losers no? over here. No. Wasn't a golden goal, Anto? Yeah, we did. Yeah, that's what I thought. And they accepted yeah. to play the yeah. golden goal rules. So we the you know, this is loser mentality. Loser mentality. You know, when you're yeah. a Juventus fan and you want up, uh, <laughs> you you starting to lose, you, you become like one of those. So mm. I'll explain Understood. it real quick. A- anyone yeah. ever play in those games in like the schoolyard and a team is winning by so many goals and then the other side screams out, "Oh, last goal wins!" Nobody ever said replies and then they saying? score and they think that they want that's how it ended 12 11. anyway <laughs> let's talk about another team so that uh that won and uh finally made things very easy and and simple on their fans which was juventus 3-0 uh, against a bologna side who i saw a stat that they were the bottom two teams in terms of their body centro the the team's placement on the field they were the lowest mm. bologna was 20th and juventus was 19th if oh i'm not God. mistaken or 17th and 18th one, one of those uh, but Juventus, I, I had a feeling that this game coming out of the international break, they needed to make some sort of response. Uh, you see the half-empty stadium goes to uh, a lot of the way that the team is uh, is playing. Uh, Kostic and Vlahovic both did great. They linked up with Serbia in the international break, and then they linked up uh, again. Really both bright spots. We also added up, they scored 67% of Juventus' goals in Serie A wow. between uh, sorry, no, 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 Milik, Milik and Vlaovic. Mm-hmm. Sorry, not Kostic. Milik and Vlaovic scored 67%. He's nervous, he's nervous. Of, uh, of the Serie A goals, because Milik also was on the score sheet uh, as well. Uh, yeah, hard to add up when you guys are cheating over there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, so they made they made it simple. They made it um, uh, a good game. For me, honestly, before the match, I thought that this would be a moment. I think that this will be the turnaround for Juventus this season. They got Chiesa, who started training with the rest of the group. They got Pogba, who started taking the field again. I feel like they needed a moment of going into a break, come out, win 3-0, and try to start fresh against the Milan side next week that will also be depleted. And again, another way to make a statement. You're He's laughing. Got I'm la- no, I, He's I saw got a funny meme. And so that's why I'm... I I love meme. You saw the meme, Pete? There was a meme. You Can you show it, it to us? Show it to us. I'm going to tell you it. Okay, but even it? better. So they said like, oh, Juventus scored three goals yesterday. That was because they were away from Allegri for 10 days. So ah, <laughs> that, was, oh, that was the, that was that the mix. Sense. But, you know, the jokes aside. <laughs> that makes sense. The Juventus <laughs> team, you know, I think also the biggest thing is goals allowed. Keep it at zero. And then obviously for Juventus, it's, it's being able to score goals. You have the players. I like Allegri, I guess, uh, move to to put Vlahovic and Milik to start them. So that shows that, you know, there's an effort to to go forward. And then, like Marco said, you're going to have players now coming back from injuries. Like, the quality of the players are there. You know, no one can really discuss this. I think it's more so Allegri and his style that puts a lot of, uh, I guess, uh, question marks on this Juventus team and where they can go. But, I mean, to any for anyone that thought that Juventus is not going to be in the fourth place uh, range... No. I mean, you guys have something else to, you know, some, out, some, right? some, something good. You guys are on something. So the are thing we is, on something on what? You what do you think, think we are on? You don't think Juventus is going to be there in the end? I'm not sure about that, Pete. I'm not saying to win the Scudetto, but they're going to be I'm not sure about right that, Pete. Uh, I'm listen. not sure about that. With the players that they have, I think they'll I be mean, okay. they should. They yeah. should. I, they they should. should. The thing is, the thing with me is, it's one game, yeah, it's good and all. But I don't want to base it just on one game. It's not, I don't want everything swept under no. the rug based on this. There's obviously going to be a lot of trolls from Juve. So, yeah, they got time away from the club. They got maybe a little break, a little re, uh, refreshing, I think, altogether from the international break. But I want to see within the next few days if they continue to play this well or if it was just one off game and the chaos is going to return back. I think the only time will tell. But Mike, look, next week they're going to be facing, before the, besides the Tel Aviv, they're going to be facing AC Milan. Their chances to turn the season around, I don't think this is your turning point. For you to turn the season around, you have to win against AC Milan, which you could. Uh, Win? Because AC Milan is down right now. We don't have some of our best players. But nevertheless, they don't have to win. They have to. He said to turn the season around, you have to win. For you to turn the season around, you have to put the season around for you? Scudetto win? No, for the, no, to be on the they're not going to win the Scudetto. They don't have the quality to win the Scudetto. It's not about going for the Scudetto. No, it's about it's having a spirit around you that you start to win and you start to get out of this negative spiral of losses to Monza, 
to in right. all of these games. They have in the Tibet people. They want. They have to win the next two games. They have to win them decisively. In other words, not those scrappy wins or lucky wins. They have to show them that the, the team is there, the quality is there, and that the will is there, and the mentality is there. Because not you know the game is not what the game itself. You know every every season every week can change, but the mentality and the will has to be there. You have to show me on the field. So. The next week is going to be very critical for you guys. If you don't pivot on the right side, on the, on the positive side, I think that your season can be big trouble. I disagree because I think versus Milan, you're allowed to to lose. In, no, you're in, not. In the, yeah. in the not Milan doesn't have six or seven stars. But his point was saying, oh, right, if you right. want to turn around, then right, there would need to be a win. Yeah, He's not need, saying that you had to. Yeah. Okay. I, I accept that. But the same thing <laughs> is, the season is very long and... This this season and this year, there's a lot of good teams. So, like we've been saying over and over again, anybody can surprise anybody. A lot of these, I guess, lower level teams are giving a run for the money for the, these big top teams that we're so used to winning. So, I feel that you know, as long as Juventus are are in it and and can keep up with the and and, and that the top teams are not too far, like they have a chance to even potentially win the school that time. Get out of here, Pete. You must have been some sort of a... What have you been drinking lately? I mean, yesterday we had a party. I had a... I had a few... I had a couple of few drinks. I had a... What, what did I have, Mike? Sex on the beach. Right? And? A couple of them. And then uh, um, rum and uh, coke and rum. Rum and coke, whatever. Yeah. What, what were you drinking? Something is not Pira really... Ginger ale only. Juventus <laughs> winning the campionato? Maybe how next many campionato. Point, how many points away are they? They are a lot. Seven. Of, Seven, so three games. Yeah, but look how many teams they're, they're I fighting. I understand, but it's still early, Anto. Too still early. early. So That's that means you can win too, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> can you? Of course I can. You have to be a believer. The math, the stats, and the maths is still there for everybody of to course. win. Okay, so you can still win, right? Say it. Say, <laughs> say you it. You want to try to get me? Yeah, either. say it. Can you still win, Pete? Can you still win? Mathematically. Milan can still win. No, you. See what you're trying to do this little guy? All right. So, Marco, congratulations. You were fighting for the Scudetto. <laughs> congratulations. Okay. That's you what know, I call you know, it to you know, be. You that are great to twist. I don't twist words. anything. He's a real manipulator, right? asking you a You've known him for question. how many years? You, you should be a reporter, Anto. You should be a reporter, a journalist. All right. Next. <laughs> Let's go to a team that, if you want to talk math, uh, Udinese are right oh there at the God. top with the rest of the crew. I watched their game against Verona today, and and this team, I love teams that you believe that they're going to get back into a match, and I was sure that Udinese was going to come back into this one. They were losing 1-0 to Elas Verona, uh, and uh, this, this man Sotil is unbelievable. They've never had six wins uh, in a row this early on mm. in the history of Udinese. Wow. In the history of the club, we, we posted it uh on the on the scoreboard today it was the, it was the caption and they have the most points from a losing position so that means that they keep their team so Teal keeps his team in there even when they're out and he was going against their former coach in Chofi who's Verona's uh, mm -hmm. coach now and Verona my gosh they play terrible Verona played terrible. But they were winning they had nothing game. until yeah, some chances played. in the first half. All they the do, first half they had chances. All they do is cross okay. the ball. That's their only game right, plan. They have some chances. It's to send that crosses was a nice in. Goal. The first goal was nice. That, uh, their only their only game plan is to be physical and is to cross the ball in. That's exactly what Trophy did with the Udinese last year, oh, which is why course. they didn't do as good. Now they brought in a guy who's brought a lot more structure to the team and who plays the game the right way, way in my opinion. For the way that I see it, that's how I would analyze it because this is virtually the same exact squad as last year that is performing way better. Actually, they lost Molina, so they have to play Pereira as the right wing back. So they've gone down in a sense, if you even want to say that. Uh, but either way, it doesn't take away. They brought Beto in. Beto scores the goal. Mm -hmm. uh, they win the game, and, and this Udinese is, is flying high, and, and you love to see it. They fight. They're demanding. Even a guy like Becao, I mean, I couldn't stop looking at him the entire game. He plays as a right center back. But he'll go up and attack. He plays as like a right wing at times. He's aggressive. He goes to He's the ball. He's very good with his head. They have a bunch of guys who just play the game Delufeo the right way. Delufeo is the best player for me that they have. Delufeo is everything goes through him. Everything. He's, he's the fantasista. They have a good mix. They, good mix. they got they physical, mix. like Makengo too. Yeah. In if Italy, Makengo goes into a success. tackle, you're not winning the tackle. In Italy, we call him La Mina Vagante. That means translated in English. It's the... What do you call it? Those I don't know. How do you call Lamina? You? <laughs> Lamina is something that explodes when you touch it. The mine, mind. Mine. The mind. The mind that is... But, but, but nobody knows what it is, so... Unpredictable mind. Unpredictable mind. That's it. 
la Mina Vagante, just call double check, Google it up. Yes. So Google that's why De is. De Lofeo, it's all over the place for uh, Udinese. He could have went to a bigger team. I wish I, I think kept, uh, we still had on AC Milan. And Milan, he was very good, to be but honest. His, when he his there, move was so to good. Napoli, and you could see in the first couple games of Udinese, his mind wasn't, wasn't there. Mm-hmm. I think he was still thinking about his transfer towards Napoli. But I respect him because he said that he didn't want to go to Napoli because he is not a winger anymore. Mm-hmm. He said, I made it clear to them that I, I am not a winger. I'm a second striker. That's my position. And hey, if you got to take a step back to play in the right system, it's very. I'm sure it was very tempting for him to try to go to Napoli, but I credit him. He doesn't need a big team. He's got his people. They're in third place, one point off of a first of the top mm-hmm. of the top two that are tied, and they are playing the game the right way. They play with heart. They play with passion. And for me, it's all down to the. Un fantasista, bravo. It's very very good. This is what Cassano calls un fantasista, one un palleggiatore. Un palleggiatore is someone that just doesn't look at the ball all the time. He just looks at the pl- at the play and he slow. Everything slows down on, it, on in front of him. But uh, Delufo is one of those players that uh, that is un palleggiatore. The, all the rest is just uh, scrappy stuff. Dybala is another one of them. So we have only few of them in. Uh, in uh, that they're capable to do those things. I think next week, what gets really interesting is when Udinese. I, I know they already played big teams. They they played uh they played Roma. They beat Roma four zero. They beat they beat you guys. Um, and they're gonna play against Atalanta, who Atalanta is mm. another team who's top of the table. They're lucky. Uh, who Atalanta is mm. playing a really different yep. style. We already we've yep. talked about it a lot. Uh, they they've reinvented themselves, and the game against Fiorentina was not an easy match for them mm-hmm. as well. That clash is going to be a clash clash of two really tough teams to break down. They play a physical game. They will they they try to always stay in a match tactically. Both are extremely organized. So I think I think the coaching philosophy is pretty similar between Sotil and Gasparini. Gasparini. Yeah. yeah, that's well, true. But look at Atalanta. I mean, I think they're the best defense right now, which is remarkable considering. You know the team has always been let's go forward, let's play proactive, let, let's let's score as many goals as we can. And you see a lot of these games that they've won one nothing. You know, and even versus the Roma last, you know, the week prior, where Roma should have maybe won that won that game or at least get some goals in, but they were able to maintain, like you said, the tactics and maintain their position on the field. And even versus mm-hmm. uh, Fiorentina, which is a very tough game. You know, Fiorentina, the way that they press, the way that they go at the 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 opposition i think it was a very important win for atalanta and they had even chances to you know get that second goal they, they didn't they ended up getting the three points and winning the game at the end but like they have a lot of things going forward and the fact that they have a full week every every week to be able to prepare uh their games gasparini i'm sure is now uh salivating at the fact that he can have a full uh training week to be yeah, able to, they don't have champions to be able to dissect things. the opponent team, the the opponents. So serious question between those two teams that we just mentioned, between Atalanta, who finally are starting to also we should give a shout to this that their their home form they've already won two games they won four home games all season mm. it seems like their home form is getting better and their stadium by the way looks beautiful on mm-hmm. tv it uh, really looks like an English style stadium I actually loved when uh, when I noticed that because I know they revamped it. Between these two sides, obviously different questions in terms of the ceiling, but do we think that each of these can make an upset? When I say upset for Atalanta, it's pushing for a Scudetto. Yeah. And when I say upset for Udinese, it's getting into the European spots, which before the season we had carved out for just the Elite Seven, the ones that we already know. None of the above for me. <laughs> yeah, I agree. None Not of for the Scudetto, above. for no. Atalanta. None least. of the above. Explain. So where do you guys sure. each okay, see I'll their you, ceilings of, of each squad? I'll tell you this. All, right. all the wins are, 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 is what I call miserable wins. Those are one nothing wins. At some point, miserable. they're going to they're gonna stop. I mean, uh, you're going you're gonna to stop winning one nothing. You're going to wind up tying a bunch of games. You're going to wind up losing a bunch of games because, uh, you know, the, the the experience that you have into that team, you, 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 you have a young team. You don't, you're not going to cut the masters. I mean, right now, it's the beginning. A lot of people. So are, explain their ceiling. What's their ceiling? Okay, for, the ceiling. For I will say. I can see Atalanta. Atalanta uh, coming maybe uh, on fourth or fifth, but not not breaking into the winning the campionato. That's far and how about a big Udinese? stretch. Udinese, I see them. Uh, they could be as the surprise of uh, what's the of surprise? coming what's making a... the Champions League this year. What? Uh-huh. I'm serious. Easy. I was the, gonna say conference no, league. No, no, no. They can make the Champions League. They can make the Champions. And one of the big teams is going to go out. Could be Juventus or Inter. Anyone have a different opinion on uh, Atalanta? I'm serious. Inter, uh, I don't on, see Inter doing anything Atalanta. this year. Hot take. You know what? I'll throw myself in the... 
I'll throw my hat into the pool. I think don't throw that hat no, tonight. No. It looks Go good ahead. on you. I think Atalanta, given the fact that they're getting these wins and maybe not necessarily playing well, mm-hmm. shows that they have the right makeup to be I able agree. to push for I that. I think that's a good so thing. So once they start playing well, they have the caliber players. They have Zapata. They have Muriel. You said it's a young team, but I think they have a perfect mix because this is a team that has played in Champions League, have played the big games, and know what it takes uh, to play those important games. And I think Gasparini now having that week off where you don't have to uh, mix and match players to you know uh, prepare for the midweek game the travel the injuries and everything else you're able to finally focus on one um, you know focus on the campionato so what's a, so what what do you so say I'm gonna say that what do you say I'm saying Atalanta can be the dark horse to win the Scudetto what do you say ah, no, 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 Pete you you're must so be, wrong you know, something must have gone wrong you're with so you wrong. yesterday I agree with Antonio I don't know why yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For the first time ever. I, I don't know. Be, be. Be. The popo, uh, <laughs> Can you check, it went to your head. The you best case, your let me say. The, yeah, he's good. The though. best case scenario for Atalanta, I think, if they make top four. Best case scenario. And for Udinese, and maybe four. if they make Converse League, it would be a blessing. But I don't think they can go that far. Listen. Atalanta's not going anywhere near the Scudetto. Mike, we're not going to give it to them. <laughs> yeah, these would be, the, these the are are great clips. Yeah, in eight like months. I can't wait for Atalanta to win when Atalanta wants to score that on eight months, cl- <laughs> they're gonna, they're gonna post your video. Good, good. good. I would deserve. Mike, that. you know how much yeah. I love Gasparini. Don't get me wrong, yeah. but uh, I see the makeup of the you. team. It's, uh, you know, they scrappy hard, wins. They, the wins are wins, but nevertheless, they scrappy wins. Fiorentina, I saw Icone uh, playing a very bad game, oh. but uh, yeah, it's Fiorentina, if they. You know, they, they were on the game until the very end, technically. And uh, I, I just did it. It would have gone, uh, not not that Atalanta would have lose the game, but I, I would see if Fiorentina would have tied the game, I would not, I would not be surprised. So, uh, so it's the, the team is there. With AC Milan, they had another tie. was kind of a scrappy. So, hey, let's wait and see. To me, they don't have the makeup to, uh, to make a... To make the, the Champions the League, or the, I'm saying the yeah, ceiling we'll could be win this. Forget about the campionato. So, right. since we were on hot takes, we uh, we had posted on Twitter and Instagram Twitter. Uh, that Angisa in the moment Angisa is the best midfielder in Serie. A. We've done this before. Oh, were you one of the guys Peter that was hating? Uh, on no, the I don't hate. I nah. appreciate. <laughs> Okay, no, buddy. to me, Lobotka in Napoli is much. I mean, for, it's slightly different, but Lobotka is the finishes. So my question is, if he's not the best midfielder, which, by the way, we've posted this for Milinkovic Savic, we've posted it for Tonali as well. Uh, it's just a more of a way, like in the moment you lose yourself. You guys, fans, you, you guys are troublemaker. You're creating trouble because Ben Asser is better than those, the, 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 of those three. Uh, Krunic is better than all of those no, guys. No, 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 no. Ben Asser is better than Languisa. Okay. He's better than Tonali and he's better than, uh, what's you his You think name? so? Absolutely. Better than Milinkovic Savic? Absolutely. No. Absolutely. Milenkovic Savic for me he's hands dying, down. But it's, it's not consistent the, look Ben Asser is dynamic it's all over the are team. you kidding me yeah by far and by far this season has just, been the most just do a survey just put it on do a survey Ben Asser. not because it's in Milan don't get me wrong I like even more Lobotka I think Lobotka Lobotka and, uh, and uh, Ben Asser, I would put them tied on the same uh, same level explain on Milenkovic Savic Milenkovic Savic for as far as dynamic player I mean the guy at his size his ability his technical ability the goals that he scores, this is an all-round midfielder that you want, and for me, is is amazing. And it's it's remarkable that the Premier League teams or any other of these big teams have not put out the money Good, don't tell for them. this player. <laughs> How it, many goals did here. he score? How many goals has he scored with the Lazio? The, it's unbelievable. It was, a, it was a good amount. Yeah, and what position amount. does he play? Mm-hmm. Center Santa, midfielder. Santa, Santa. Okay, so yeah. let me know who else has that type of output Bravo. as a Milinkovic Savic. That's all I gotta say. I'm, I'm, I'm you with you as well, Pete. For no, me, Milinkovic Savic. If I think about one player, and obviously a lot of these guys, they could play together, but that's not that's not the fun of the game. The the game is who is the best. For me, I'm with you as well. I don't see any. Uh, midfielder who dominates as much as Milinkovic Savic does in a game in terms of his goal scoring and his assists, he's always a nuisance. His physical ability and the size of him also doesn't make sense. And he's really good at playing one touch passes as well. Like he's got such such a great mix. And I'm telling you right now, what's going to happen? I'm making this prediction. I don't care if I get clipped and it's a joke. In the World Cup with Serbia, you're going to see the world is going to realize who Milinkovic Savic is. Let me tell you something. I said, you guys are a little Okay, you bit... went. Let Mike go. Oh, Who's I'm the best sorry. midfielder? 
<laughs> Who's the best midfielder? This season, we all said we all said one. This season, I think, I'm, in terms of in, uh, being in form, I think we have to give the give it to Anguisa only for this season, the first eight Aye. games or whatever. Okay, explain. Uh, I think he's been so dynamic overall. I think Spalletti really found how well found him as a player, how good he can become. Him and Lobotka over there playing in that position and uh, he knows when to attack. He knows when to defend. He has great stamina. No one could really outmuscle him. And I'm not saying Savage has been doing it for years, but if we're talking in form, yeah, in form. But if we're saying overall the past few seasons, it's obviously Savage. He's been world class if, the if past few Mike, seasons. If you were building um, a team and you started with a midfielder, out of everyone, because now you have to take everything into account. You take oh, past okay. seasons. See, that's you a take, different question. No, no. Yeah. But I'm saying you're building a yeah. team. You could go all based off right now. It's perfectly normal. Which one midfielder would you start to build your team around? I mean, based on everything, it'd have to be Savage because he's okay. showed it in a bigger sample size. Gotcha. For, but in form, I'd have to give a lot of credit to Angi, so that's what I mean. I have a last thing for the on the podcast, unless you guys have other stuff. Obviously, we got Champions League. Monza. Ooh, it's beautiful. Aladino. Hey, listen, it takes chops to be able to uh, to select your Primavera coach. Chops. And then the guy wins his first game versus Juventus. Not and bad. then now uh, wins 3-0, three three right? Zero. Versus Sampdoria. Yeah. So Galliani doesn't Sampdoria have sacks uh, Giampaolo. Giampaolo. It's been kind of... They sacked him. The most sacked coach in Serie A. They're Giampaolo. talking about your boy Stankovic. Hey, listen. Kind of look like Stankovic From Red today. Star. All right. Mm. Hey, Dejan Stankovic, I think, is... He proved enough with Red Star. Didn't he play for Sampdoria a while ago? Mm. Not really. He played Inter many times. And Lazio, then, Inter. He may he he might might have, have to play with some. I know Veron did. Mike. I know. Mike, double check. Sedorf actually played for Sampdoria. But I don't remember if Stankovic. I think he played with Lazio straight from Red Lazio, Star. Inter, yes, Inter kind of. Inter fans like low key were talking about Stankovic. The thing is with Stankovic, I think uh, Sampdoria is a much better fit for him where he can get his feet wet. But then, you know what? You see a lot of these coaches; they're getting the opportunities in there, and they're making of it. So, Inter Lazio, if you if if you believe no Sampdoria, no Sampdoria, yeah. Mm. So, if you believe the 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 coach and his project and what he can, what he's able to, uh, like really show to the to the team and how he can take hold of the locker room, there's no more like oh he doesn't have enough experience or oh, this guy's not ready. Like these guys, Italiano. Paladino, De Zerbi. De Zerbi also. Like these are guys that have their fresh ID ideas. We've got to say Sotil also Sotil. for the mm -hmm. wrong for this time. Like these are fresh ideas ready to go and their teams are performing. There's no more that fear of oh, we gotta defend, we gotta stay here, we gotta try to get that zero zero result. I have a weird topic, but uh I just want to bring it up because we have Antonio. You were obviously born in body. One of the things I was reading the statement from uh Joe Barone today. Who was very upset with uh, the Atalanta fans um, at the statements that they made during the Fiorentina game, and they they have this territorial what they call territorial discrimination against Southerners, uh, like they say Terroni. Terroni. And it was obviously to to be fair and show the entire picture. Same thing happened in the Napoli game where Fiorentina fans were doing it towards the Napoli fans as well. Um, well what do you for you that you're born in Sicily? You've obviously gone through body. 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 Sorry, Sicily. my bad. Body. Body. I'm sorry. You thought this you was your dad, dad for a second? Yeah. <laughs> Thank God he's not my dad. Oh. oh. Thank God for you. Oh. <laughs> I will whip him in shape. <laughs> the disrespect. No, I am surprised. No, you brought that Atalanta, Fiorentina. There are none of them. They're northerners, both the teams. I mean, it's Florence and then it's Bergamo. Why, why is this Terroni uh, things coming up with Joe Barona? Oh, it's, uh, it's it was towards it was directed the, to him. To them. Oh, well, listen. It, but in general, I'm just saying in, in the big picture of, of things. Well, in uh, in the, uh, let me explain to you from my point of view. The South, the South is a big challenge from the North because the South is what made the North great. All of the people from the South, like your dad, me and all of us, we emigrated to go to the north to, to go to work in uh, the major industry. One of them is the Agnelli's Fiat. And then uh, that's where the major industry manufacturers were in, in the north. Now, in the south, we're, we have nothing but agriculture. You know why? Because we don't have the the the, the water, the, the big rivers where the industry can, they can set up and just use the water just to run. So there is always the jealousy that... Uh, they call us Terroni because we've always been a challenge to them. And Terroni is someone that works on the land. Meanwhile, them, 
that then the, the people that they don't work the land, that those are the people that they, they work into the major city. The factory and that's workers. what they think. Yeah, the fact, no, 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 it's nothing it's to do not. with factory. They said the intelligence is inside of the, the city. And the, the like offices, yeah. Well, offices, and uh, they think that they have more well, class. It's the same. It's the same discussion north and south here in the U.S. Yeah, we don't have that. Uh, we that stereotype, but terrone, like the hillbillies or terrone you know. significa lavoratore della terra. In other mm. words, we have our hands dirty with mm. dirt, but we make things happen. Like we, farmers or something. Right, yeah. Yeah. farmer work. Yeah. But it's red very neck, derogatory. Neck. It's very derogatory. Yeah, it's derogatory. It's very derogatory. So explain, explain. I'll I'll explain I, that's you. why I brought it to the end of the podcast because. So, I know we talk about football, but this Joe, is something Joe that- Joe is right about complaining about that because that is into the, 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 the derogation and the derogation, how do you say it in, in, uh, in English? So in, this is an offensive term to label somebody coming from the South Terroni, but at the same time, there is jealousy because the Terroni, the Terroni, wherever they go, they excel. Okay, so anytime that they see a, ter- a terrone stepping up to the some of the highest position, they said, "Oh, guarda questo terrone! Look at this terrone!" That means, that means, hey, we are the one that we suppose we are born to be occupying those positions. Yeah. But on the same time, look at those terrone; they're stepping up, they're taking over everything because we got brains. The conflict has has been around for a long time, and there was like this divide between the north and south. There was even a political party that the biggest that, politician were all Terronis. Yeah, but I'm saying there was also a political party that wanted a separation yeah. uh, of Italy, the secession. Oh. Yeah, yeah, the north. But uh, yeah. to the to a certain extent, you know, even in Milano, and I'm not talking very far. I'm talking 50s, maybe 60s. And you're Sicilian, by the way. You're, yeah, your family's my Sicilian. my dad is Sicilian. My mom is Neapolitan, Neop- Neop- but Sorry. his uncle. Uh, my dad's uncle went to live in Milano mm. and he had to be selective or rather he had to try to find a place where he can live because they would not have, they would not rent not allow them, to, yeah. Terroni. to the Terroni. But the, look what they do right now. They're all flocking down to the South where down. all the culture and yeah, all the beauty I think, is there. I think now it's changed. It's the unfortunate yeah. part is within the soccer stadium, there's still the sense of the hooligans, uh, hooliganism. Oh, absolutely. There are a, bunch have of- a lot of ignorant people, unfortunately, that make certain comments it's not a, it's not the the majority there's a minority and unfortunately the minority sometimes are the ones that are screaming the loudest right but uh and some of the people actually they the, the reasons one of the reasons why they're looking down at commiso is because commiso is calabrese too it's uh, it comes all the way down from the south but commiso has got brain too what what, what commiso did he's one of the biggest uh imprenditori over here in the united states he bought fiorentina he's bringing fiorentina to a, a, a different uh you know a level and uh and it is, is building one of the most beautiful Centro Sportivo in Firenze. So there's a lot of jealousy. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, we might be Terroni, but uh, we don't feel uh, inferior to anybody. That's why we always take it to them all the time. I want to tell you one of the funny part, and then we're going to quit this, uh, this uh, subject. When we were in the army, when I, I served on the Air Force, they were the, the Northerner and they were the Terroni like me. The Terroni, geographically goes from Rome south. Actually, I would say Rome, it's right in the middle, but it's from Naples south. So the the groups that we were, uh, we were uh, part of the group, associated as a group, we were all the Sicilian, the Baresi and the Napoletani. And then the, the not the fight, but the, the rivalry at any level was uh, against the Fiorentini, the Milanesi and Torinesi. I capito. So what we used to do, well, they were asleep, some of those guys, because the fight, I'll tell you. <laughs> I don't know where this is going to no, go. No, I'm going to tell you. Right, it's funny. Tell us. So the Terroni, to beat the first on the Adonata, because if you're not there when the, the trompa uh, uh, sounds in the, in, the, in the Air Force. To you, wake up, right? To wake up, not to wake up, to just be, to be to present up. up there. Yeah, the the last up. people that they show up, they went up and do this on the kitchen. So what we used to do, some of the, the, some of the non-Terroni, the Northerners, they used to sleep with the boots. So in other, in other words, they didn't quicker, have to wake up to be and quicker, uh, put yeah. the boots on and just get themselves ready oh and run gosh. up there. So what we used to do, we used to just get up yeah, at night nice. and we used to take uh, the shoelaces and Tie, ah. tie them on the, on the bed. So, so they, they used trim- to wake up. They were they were oh, no. <laughs> They were they were not handcuffed, but they, they, they were feet cuffs <laughs> to the bunk beds. So uh, it, you it tie was, their shoes together. Oh yeah. No 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 no. We used to, to tie the, the shoes to the bed. To the bed. Yes. <laughs> 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 Whose idea was that? Oh, hey, well, you recorded it, right, Anton? Oh, my wish! I got a phone back then. There were no. You didn't post it. You didn't then. post it on Instagram. No, we didn't. I don't have an Instagram, <laughs> guys. By the way, for the 
for everybody. I don't post anything on Instagram. Those two hands. What are you talking about? There's an IFTV handle. Uh, there is an IFTV handle. I didn't know that. Yeah, my wife, she follows me. But uh, those are the two animals that they post on my stuff, <laughs> yes. which, uh, which is, uh, is good stuff. I love that. Anyway, I, I brought the subject up. I didn't know uh, what we use and what we not, but I wanted to, we never talked about this. So I wanted to, you know, there's some backstory that obviously you know because you, you lived it. You were born there and you grew up there. Um, but yeah, anyway, great weekend of Serie A for most of us. Not all of us, but better times ahead. This weekend against Barca. If you could if you could do something this weekend. Yeah. Do like Allegri does. Judge me on this game. Tell Inzaghi. Ah. Tell, tell Simone or Limone. Or Limoncello. Because the more the more the time goes by, we're going from Limone. To where, uh, now we're going to go from uh, Limoncello. And then it's going to be what? Uh, it's going to be maybe Amaro del Capo. So just tell him. <laughs> just say something that is going to make a Limonata. spark. He's going to spark the team into action. You need una scintilla. In Italian, we call it scintilla. In America, you call it a spark. You need to spark the team. So I don't know how you're going to do it, but just do it. There we go. Well said. All right, guys. As always, thank you for watching. Subscribe. We'll see you soon. Ciao, Ciao ragazzi. Guys. Ciao.